Okay, what we're gonna do for the next little while is give you an update on the coaching department, what we've, uh, and when I say we, I mean collectively, all of us have done over the last 12 months to give you a bit of an idea uh, where we're moving forward with and, and some of the um, processes that we've gone through over the last uh, little while. So our agenda is to talk about the community stream update, an excellent stream update. Uh, I can give you the information we've got from CSA. We're going to look at the pre-B license courses that we've conducted uh, in 2012. Uh, two B license courses. We're going to talk about the learning facilitators application process. So you've been through that, but I want you to be aware of exactly what was done. Uh, we're going to talk about our new female mentorship program and then a little bit of an update from the CSA. <coughs> That's the plan. So this is what we've been working off for the last 11 months. Does this look familiar to everybody? Yep. There's no changes for 2013. So what you've been saying is exactly the same for 2013. All our courses are running simultaneously. Active Start Fundamentals, Learn to Train, and Soccer for Life. They still need the MED, and they still need the respect in soccer if they're going to be coaching competitively in 2013. So it's status quo from this year. Is, is everybody OK with that? Yeah. Now, there are changes coming from NCCP. Uh, and when, we don't know. They're, they're working diligently with CSA right now. And as soon as we get that information, I, I promise I'll pass it on to you. But I don't anticipate anything to change in 2013 from the community stream standpoint. Okay. We'll talk about the excellent stream once we've gone through the presentation. Bobby, anything you want to add to that? No? Martin? Where's Martin? Martin, anything you want to add to that? Good? Okay. Hey Mark, just a question yep. for The children's license is a no-go? It's a no-go right now. I, I will talk about it in a little while once we get to the enterprise, but it's not going to happen this year. Uh, the courses that, that you people have delivered, our LFs and our MLFs, here's, here's our total for this year. And that includes, we've got, uh, Charles has got a couple coming up towards the end of the year and Disha's got one. So we've got three more to continue on to the, to, to the end of December. But Active Start, 57, Fundamentals, 50, Learn to Train, 69, and Soccer for Life, 63 courses. Now remember, we had a late start this year, waiting for the material from CSA. We didn't take bookings until... Uh, early, early January, and as, as Rick mentioned yesterday in his presentation, we had a lot of cancellations on the active start because they were booked too early. So, yes, mate? What's the target? Uh, we, we don't have a target, mate. That's, I mean, when we, for budget region, reasons, it's pretty close to what we budgeted, but we don't have a target. It's, it's just a matter of... We, it's, it's, it's tough to say because it was the first year we did them, so we've got no previous history to draw back on. I think this year, I'd like to see that increase considerably in that I think the message is getting out to the clubs, and uh, the mistake that we ran into this year was clubs and districts were booking them in January and February, and you know it's, it's based on Hasley coaches, and most clubs and districts don't have their coaches in that program that early in the year. Assuming that we would have one per club, what's our number? Yeah, 500. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. Is. It's fairly low. It's fairly low, but we, we, but I, I, I'm confident it'll, it'll it'll increase. It'll increase. Yes, mate. Just just on his. I know you said you had nothing to compare it to. How did it compare to like let's say the child youth and senior? It, it's difficult to say, mate, because they were mandatory. You had to take all three. Whereas now these are not mandatory. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's but, really. But, you know, active starting mark. You know, it's, it's, it has to be more. Yeah. Yeah. Have yep, definitely. And I think, you know, with you, if you're involved with a club, uh, you, you, there's two options. We're going to talk about the options in a little while. There's two payment options. So if you're involved with a club, uh, you can run the course, and it's $20 per coach. So $20 for four hours, of the, you, the material that we deliver, the resources that we hand there, it's a great deal. It really is. I believe it's a great deal. And, and, I, and I've, uh, I've delivered the courses, and I've seen the courses in the clubs. The feedback we've had from, from parents and coaches, and I'm sure you've you, you, you got the same feedback as I have, it's been, it's, it's been well received, very well received. In fact, it's pushed our numbers up for fundamentals, because a lot of people took the active start and then went straight into the fundamentals. So, uh, you know, we rely on you as, as LFs as well as uh, important members within your clubs to push this because I think it's really going to make a big impact on our player development programs at the younger age groups. So Stevie? We don't know exactly how many coaches that represent. No, we don't, mate. We don't, yeah. 
Yeah, we will, uh, this time next year I'll have accurate numbers for you, exactly how many we've got. Yeah. So is everybody okay with that? Yep, yeah, so that's where we were for 2012. Here's some of the feedback. So the feedback that we got from uh, clubs, districts, and coaches, uh, the length of the courses were ideal. That three and a half, four hour course for mum and dad coaches coming to the active start was the ideal length of time. Um, fundamentals uh, being an, an eight hour course was ideal. The workbooks and DVDs were a big success, as, as we thought, didn't we? Did, did you believe that when we handed them out last year? Did you, did you like the DVDs? Did you think it was a good resource to take back and use it for yourself? Yeah, so imagine coming in as a brand new coach and getting that information. So it was very, very well received, and we're going to continue on with that this year. In fact, our workbooks have now been uh, taken by the CSA and distributed across the country, so all the provinces will be using the workbooks that, that we've got here, with, with a few little uh, changes. So it's gone national, uh, uh, the, uh, the workbooks. The feedback from, from, uh, from the LFs that delivered the courses, they enjoyed, enjoyed the course, enjoyed the material, enjoyed the facilitating. Uh, and they like the format of the course. We had some feedback on some duplication from Active Start to Fundamentals. We had some feedback on the English, French translation. So there was, that's the stuff we've passed on to the CSA and are waiting for uh, the revised material to come next month. Uh, the, we started our MLF uh, support program. It was a little late, uh, but we started around uh, February, and again, the feedback we had from MLFs that had MLFs go out to work with them, support them, was very positive, and that will start as of today. So you get your MLFs assigned to you today, and we'll offer the support and evaluation from this from this point onwards. So we're we're almost three months ahead of where we were this time last year. So that's uh, some of the feedback. Anyone want to add, add anything to that? Agree? Disagree? Everybody awake? Nod your head, I know you're awake. <laughs> yeah, good. Yes, mate. The only kind of thing that I found was that there was a great difference between the facilities. Right, I'm going to come to that. Next slide, mate. Next slide. Thanks, Dermot. So, areas of concerns. <coughs> Host booking the right size facility. That was a big concern for, for me and I know for some of the, uh, the facilitators. So this is where, and we're going to talk about this uh, in our roles of LFs. It's very, very important that when we speak to the host organization that they have the correct size facility for the course that we're delivering. And we, we've got to be firm and we've got to stick to our standards and say, hey, this is a soccer for life course. We cannot run it in an elementary school gym. I'm sorry, we cannot do that. But it's no point showing up on the day and saying that. It's your work two or three weeks before the course, asking the questions, finding out the location, and finding out what they're offering. That's when you make that call. And if you're getting a pushback from the host, then it's a call to myself, and we will deal with it from, from our standpoint. In the host manual, we clearly define the size of the facilities for the courses. So it's nothing new to them. And if they say, I didn't know, well, they did know because it's part of the application process. So as LFs, we're going to make sure that we are getting, with no surprises when we get there, we get the right facility. It's just as important as having a laptop, having the right size facility. Would you agree? So we've got to get, we've got to get tight on that. Okay? Um, having the right numbers of LFs geographically to meet the demands. We had, a, we had a huge push on these courses the last part of April, and as we all know, it's a busy time in the club, so a lot of you guys were all busy working in your clubs and we couldn't get you out to run courses. So in our hiring process this year, we've looked at the demands from a geographical standpoint. And we've actually got LFs now, we've got a, a comfortable amount of LFs spread out throughout the province. Uh, invoicing and payments to staff was an issue, wasn't it? It still is an issue. So not getting paid on time in a, in a reasonable amount of time. For some of you, for others, it may have been on time. But we're addressing that with our new uh, software program that we're, we're going to be introduced in a little while. That will speed things up dramatically. Any other concerns that we've missed out here? Yep. Yeah, that was uh, a concern we had, certainly in the northern areas. Uh, and again, we as LFs, it's absolutely imperative that we stick to our guns on this. We've got to make sure that we have a minimum of 15 participants in a course. And it'll always come back to you about the costs. It's nothing to do with the costs. It's to do with delivering a quality course. 
And we cannot deliver, as you know, we cannot deliver quality courses if we've got eight participants and we're trying to do uh, small-sided games. We can't do it. And out of that eight people, you've got three or, peop three or four people that show up in there, add those shoes. That affects what we do. So again, it goes back to your pre-course organization confirming with the host that they have the, the minimum amount of, of uh, participants. And I know, Giuseppe, you had a long drive. Was it Timmins you went up to, mate? And we had to cancel it up there. Um, but they, they were told prior to that. I mean, if, they, if that you had several, was it Timmins you went up to and you had to cancel? New Lisket. We had several calls with them, right, talking to them about that. Now, there's ways around it, and we've had a, a, lot, of, a lot of conversations with the, nor the northern areas um, about getting the numbers up. And it always comes back to us, it's a small community, it's this, that, and the other. And that is, it's, I totally understand. Um, but I went to, up to Capus Gasing and did a, a fundamentals and an active start. And there was no issue in a community of 8,000 people to get enough coaches. Because it was the way they went about and they advertised it and got the right people in. So they, they got the, the coaches from the club, but they also went to the high school and brought in the grade 12 students to push the numbers up. So there's lots of ways of doing this. It doesn't matter where you're from. Uh, we've got uh, uh, two courses booked in Moussigny. So we can't get more further north than that. And there's no issues with numbers up there. So uh, it's just a matter of making sure that they have the right uh, methods of keeping people and getting people to attend the courses. The big issue is if you say it's free, people ain't going to show up. So what, what we suggest is that you charge a fee, and if they attend, then you give them their fee back if, they are actually gonna, if you are going to pay for it. Well, I'll just go yep. back to your 15 participants. It's also important to make sure how many of those participants can actively take part. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. It kills us, doesn't it? And, you, and you, you know, you're, you're, you're working extra hard to rejig all the drills and small sided games because you haven't got enough participants. So again, it goes back to your conversation with the host, getting as much information out of them as you possibly can, making sure that they've got the right equipment, they're showing up to play, not in jeans. Now the, the, uh, the E2E stuff you're going to see today, um, there's going to be more information when uh, participants register for the course. There's going to be a checklist of things that they'll see when they register on the courses. So that'll hopefully help things along as well. Don't it? If I can make a suggestion, I'm kind of looking at Mark out here too. In terms of to help us market to you know, prospective coaches and so on, if the USA could maybe provide us some, I'll say materials, even, even like a simple thing would be an, an email template, if you will, that has, you know, uh, that, that's selling it, that's selling it. Um, similar to the, you know, the a little pamphlets. messages yep. that, were, that are going out, just a simple thing so that A, there's consistency, um, B, all the basics are covered, you know, everything from, you know, dress appropriately, be ready to participate, <laughs> yep. that kind of thing, yep. um, along with, you know, I'll see some marketing spin, that, that, and I know that would be helpful. Good suggestion, yeah. You got that, Matt? Yeah. Good, Matt. Brilliant. Thank you, Dermot. Thank you. No, it's, it's a good point. And we spoke about this before, mate, hadn't we? So it's, it's, uh, it's a good point. Rick. Mark, I'm just sitting here. Have we ever targeted some of the high schools? Certain communities do that. And we, we have run, we actually run courses here for some high school students. But it will depend on the, the districts and the local clubs. We, we will get into high school programs, but we're just not ready for it yet. So we are looking at that in the next two or three years. It's so just simply an act of start. Yeah, it'd be ideal, wouldn't it? And then we've got coaches to bring into the club. It's a natural progression, community hours, the whole lot. Yeah. I, I know on my school we run a soccer focus course. Yep. And there's a lot of schools in New York region and in Toronto that do too. Yep. So a lot of the college could do them in the actual class. It's yep. already, the numbers are already set up. So yep. that's just something that we would yep. look at the, the boost numbers. And, and work no, it's a great idea, mate. And we, it's on our radar, uh, for sure. Um, and also universities. We, we've started to run programs in universities. We've got Steve Payne down in Windsor. We've got uh, UFT, Stevie Hart. I apologize, Steve. <laughs> mate, I can see you. That's all that matters. Hey, you're on my mind, mate. That's it. It's, uh, so yeah, we're getting into that, into that environment as well. So we are getting there. Anything else on this? Mark, there's also an online course to share numbers. To make classes well as an online soccer course, soccer yep. specific course. Yep. Um, and 
Unfortunately, right. So it won't be a, it won't be a certified course, and there'll be no certification unless they're a trained ALF. But that's something that maybe we can look at. Can look at yeah. Because I know the, well, Paul and I both know the instructor. Good. Well, let's let's talk about that offline. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good. Any other concerns? No, but pretty much nailed it there. Good. Now that tells me right there, with the amount of concerns, not a lot of concerns, not a lot of feedback from the room, that things went well. For our first year, we were really, really pleased the way things went. So well done, guys. Great job. Uh, little quotes here. I'll let you read that. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, every, now, every time I look at it, it just rings true with me, and I hope it does with you, and it's just something that we think about every time we go into a, a course, no matter what level it is. Okay, so pre-B, this has been something that um, I've focused a lot on this year. Uh, for the simple reason, when I first, when I came into this position 12 months ago, I think I spent the first six or seven weeks just going over results from pre-Bs and having to, to determine whether people had passed or failed, yet yeah, I wasn't on the course. So we wanted to come up with a process that was more educational, was transparent, and that we felt would prepare coaches in the right manner to move on to the B license, but also get value for their time and money. So we introduced a, a new format in two, 2012. We didn't do anything with the material because the material is all CSA uh, approved and we have to follow their, their guidance on that. So we sat down, I sat down with uh, Bobby, Martin Harvey, I spoke to Steve, we spoke to some club head coaches, technical directors, and I gathered the information along with my experience uh, of being an instructor on these courses. Charles was very, very helpful on it as well. And we put a course together that was, we, we felt, are more conducive to a coach coming into a pre-B environment. So we took out one of the, the testing. So the, for the, in the old system, it was the first weekend was educational, the second weekend you had two tests. We took out one of the tests. So we made it a three-day edu three educational workshop and one day of testing. <laughs> We also met with the CSA and said, listen, can you give us some information on why our coaches are not being successful at National B? And the feedback from Ray Clark was, um, there's, there's, there's a variety of reasons, but the, the main common denominator is coaches from Ontario are not able to coach in a small-sided game. They're not able to see the game in a small-sided environment. So we took that information and we, and we designed a, a evaluation process where the first 15 minutes was uh, a technical component and the second 15 minutes was a small-sided game. So we would assign you a topic, you would introduce it in your technical practice, and then you would, we would see if you could see that component in a small study game and could you coach it. We also said to our evaluators and instructors, we're going to help them as much as we possibly can. So we're not going to stand behind them with clipboards. We're going to work with them as much as we can in the session. So if he's my coach here, we're going to stand next to them, we're going to talk to them, we're going to lead them down the garden path as much as we can without giving them the answers in the technical environment as well as a small-sided game. So in the small-sided game, we're actually, we're actually talking about the game together. We found that was a, it, went over, it was a little strange to start off with from, from our standpoint as well as the participation standpoint, but as, as the courses gained momentum and we did more courses, it became a lot more comfortable for us as uh, evaluators and the feedback that we've got from the courses on that component alone has been very, very positive. We wanted to make it sure that at the end of the course, when the individual left, that had an opportunity to, number one, be educated, but number two, to be evaluated and to be given feedback on where they were in the provincial standards. Were they ready to move on to a B license? Okay, great, you are. We recommend you move on, but we still think you need to work on this and this and this, and we've written that down and we've, and we've gone over it. If you didn't meet the standard, then we'd like you to go away and work on this, this, and this, and come back and take the course again. 
or where you're almost at the standard, we'd like you to go work away on A, B, and C, and you can apply to go on the B license in 12 months' time. So we broke it down that way. We tried to take away the pass and fail and bring in the met the standard, didn't meet the standards, make it a little bit more friendly, if you like. Every individual got a 30-minute debrief after the session, right there and then. Before they had a chance to talk to anybody else, we took them and we had uh, either a dugout or a tent or somewhere. The last one I did, it was my car because it was minus two and I was freezing. So we, in a quiet environment, we were able to sit down and debrief for 30 minutes with the candidates. So they got the feedback and they got their, they got their decision when they left at the end of that day. So there was no waiting for it. There was none of this six or eight weeks or 12 weeks. They left the course knowing where they were and the feedback on what they had to do. So that was very, very positive. Sorry, yes. For yep. the national B&A, are they going to be changing that at all? Yes. Or is it still be a no, it'll, it'll be exactly the same. And I'm going to come to that in my, my last slide, mate, so we're coming to that. So that was the big change. It was a lot of work for us. It was, it was stressful for us uh, because now you're putting yourself in an environment where somebody's just worked for 30 minutes and they may want to debate or argue their performance. But going back to what Bobby showed you yesterday with the debriefing questions, we were able to get a lot of information from the coaching in the debriefing to lead us towards a happy and conclusive debrief, whether they passed or failed. We met the standard, didn't meet the standard. And for the first five or six courses, the feedback that we were getting was from the people that didn't meet the standards rather than the people that met the standards. And it was all positive, Bobby, wasn't it? We only had one complaint in, in, the, in the spring, and that was from a gentleman that spoke five languages, had never failed anything in his life, and was not going to fail this pre-B. So we took that with a grain of salt. Okay. Um, we conducted our... our, our uh, Spring courses, we ran five, and then we, we regrouped and we revamped the material. So we had conference calls, we had other meetings, and we, and we actually revamped the material. So the, the material that we handed out was a version two by the fall. And by the spring, it'll be version three, because we're meeting again after this meeting today to go over the material. So I'm going to keep on updating it with the feedback that we've got from the staff and also from the participants. So it's on, an ongoing thing here. We brought everybody into training. We brought our MLFs and we selected nine evaluators from the LF group to be evaluators on these courses, on the B-Lessons course. And we spent a day's training going over the material and we're going to be doing more of that as we move forward to bring consistency to the program. So we're all on the same page on how we're delivering things and how we're evaluating. This, is, this was my conclusion after the springtime, which pointed me in a new direction. If we're getting coaches that were coming in, they were at the beginning at a novice level, what can we do and how can we improve the candidate coming onto the course? Which meant we had to go back to the districts and the clubs and work really, really closely with the technical directors to be able to give them the information on what we expect at a provincial level for coaches to meet the standards. So at the B license, we invited technical directors to come in and observe a session and to meet with us afterwards. But then we took it a step further and we invited technical directors to come into the post-course testing on the B license. So they had an idea of what we were evaluating the, the candidates on, how they've been evaluated, and what the candidates needed to work on before we came back and evaluated them again. Uh, Bob, you were involved in that quite a bit, weren't you, mate, in the B license? Who else? Anybody else in the room was involved in that? From a, uh, Billy, you were involved in that in your club. Uh, is anybody else that was involved in that in, here, in the room right now? No, just the two of them. So we took that a step forward in the hope that we can change this beginner and nov novice coach entering onto these courses. Mark, yes, mate. I think it's important the technical director. I know a lot of these guys apply. Yes. But I think in the club standard, we should go through the technical director, see if he thinks that they're ready to win. Yep, Bob, you're, you're bang on the money. And that's, that's the, that we brought that into the last B license. So the, the Ottawa B license that we ran to apply to be on the course, you had to have a letter of recommendation from your club head coach or technical director to support your application. 
Uh, and again, we, we had uh, 40 we had over 46 applicants. We had 40 people on the course, but there were still people that weren't ready for the course that had received letters from the so TDs. When you send that application, and should that not be, you know, put it there that we need an attachment from your TD or whatever, yeah. that we're giving you the go ahead, and if you don't receive that, we, should you accept? We received, for 46 applicants, we received uh, that from TDs. Talking about a pre-B, Bobby? Yeah, pre oh, a pre-B, I beg your pardon, pre beg your pardon, mate. My, my mistake. Pre-B, pre okay, yeah, we can take it that to that level. Because I've been to so many of them and a lot of these people are not ready. Yeah. They think they are. Right. Right? Yeah. I know we do because the club pays for it. Right. And it's not just because of the financial side of it. Yep. But they have to be ready. Yeah. I think we can certainly look at that, mate. Certainly look at that. Uh, Mark, we have looked at before coming since since training and evaluation is is, 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 uh, is getting separated yes. we have done in the yep. provincial B. Yep. So you were you already had the thought of someone coming into a pre B, get trained, but not necessarily being evaluated. Yep. Yep. So the evaluation can take place down the road, but this is something that you, you always have been CSA. Yeah, well, I'm going to touch that when we get to that. Yeah, I'll cover that point when we get there, which which may go back to your point a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is our this is our stats for 2012. So 18 pre B courses held in Ontario. It's a 100% increase on last year. We anticipate that to go considerably again for 2013. The reason being, I'd like to think it was the quality of the courses, but I'm sure it's not. It's the demand from OPDL. So uh, we, we expect that to see the increase. We had 266 coaches attend the courses, 176 met the standard, and they met the standard in, in different ways. A direct pass straight to the B license, a pass but 12 months before you reapply, uh, you, before you apply, and there's certain things you've got to work on. And then we've got 90 that did not meet the standard. And the way we set it up, if you didn't meet the standard, then it goes back to your point, you weren't ready to come on the course. So that's our stats. Now, it's a big increase on where we were this time last year. That's pretty much two thirds passing. This time last year, we were around 45% pass rate. Okay, yes, mate. What's your stance on the technical directors? You said we start rubber starting the, the letter to you guys and they, <coughs> they don't pass. So what's, what's your that, uh, there's not much I can do about it, mate. It's, uh, what, the way I look at it is this, is maybe they don't know what our standards are, and we're running, and I'm going to talk about you in, that in a little while, running a workshop for them in two weeks to show them what the standards are. So all we can do is offer the information as much as we can. But I can't go back and say, I can, I can go back and say this person wasn't ready, these are the reasons why, but not much more than that. Provincial B licenses, we ran two this year. First time we've run two in a, in a long time, and we'll be running more next year. So Kingston, 22 coaches attending. We've got people in the room that run the course. Uh, we introduced the pre-course rules of the game exam. Oh my word, this has given me sleepless nights. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> it is absolutely shocking and disgusting when I look at the results that we're getting from coaches who apparently have been coaching for years and years. And remember, the majority of the people that went through this B license had gone through the old system where they had rules of the game at child, youth, and senior, yet couldn't answer basic questions. So we allowed it to be an educational, I had to change my mind on that one, and allowed them to take it as many times as they needed to, to get an 80% pass rate. And I promise you, and this is hand on my, on West Brom getting relegated. <laughs> the last pre-B, we had one individual that took it 25 times. We had another one that took it 18 times, another one took it 11 times. Ale Am I right? Mm -hmm. Probably. Let me tell you this, it was a former national team player. Why did I, I have to get to that level? 80%? It was easy stuff, mate. Very, well, you saw the, the, the exam. So, we're going to, we, we're obviously, that's part of, we're working closely with the, the refereeing department on that, and that'll be part of uh, the courses moving <coughs> forward again this year. All candidates, uh, 
as a, these are some of the points of what he mentioned to you. So we had a TD open house on the course, and we invited in TDs from that area. From, from, the, uh, from the Kingston area, we had one individual show up. One TD showed up, and we invited everybody from the district. I wonder why. Uh, we invited all the <laughs> club head coach TDs uh, into the post-course testing, as I've mentioned. And again, we, we feel that that is something we're going to continue doing moving forward. It builds bridges with clubs, and it gets us a chance to really get into uh, and build relationships with TDs and club head coaches, and also offers a support system for the coaches who are going through this course, because now the TD or the club head coach understands what the individual needs to work on before we come back and reevaluate them. So it's, it's a group effort here. Uh, 20 coaches completed the post-course testing. Uh, the candidates' feedback was positive, and the, and the course schedule and content was reviewed again, moving into the next course. And here's the big changes in the, pre -B, uh, the B license course that we introduced. No, no. Our, our success rate on that was 60%. And we had a couple of people drop out from injuries, and one individual decided not to complete the, uh, the post-course testing. These are some of the big changes on, on the B license. So facilitation, we brought that in. Nobody else is doing that in the province yet. It's not in the country yet. It's not been mandated by, by CSA, but we wanted to get ahead of the game. So we've taken everything from the community courses and we brought facilitation in the classroom and on the fields. So the coaches that were coming through your community-based courses and have been introduced to this will have consistency when they come into the excellent stream as well. So it's all facilitation. Not much issue who that is. Is he in the top five FIFA players this year? Is that Messi? We also brought this component in. Um, we brought in a, a component where we talked about the principles of, of warm-ups, the four stages of a warm-up, and we really spent a lot of time on that. We brought Paulo in from uh, our program downstairs, the, the provincial program, and he spent uh, that first day of the, of, the, of the course talking about the benefits of a correct warm-up and how to do it. We went through stage by stage, and then on the Saturday evening, we went through some fitness testing. Um, we went through a basic introduction to fitness testing, brought some of the equipment out, and every single one of the coaches did it. It was, it was great to see. It really was. We did the yo-yo test. Everybody participated. The reason for that was we wanted to give them a basic education on this type of stuff. Moving forward in our system, if you're going into the OPDL, then you need to hire fitness staff, you need to hire medical staff, you need to have staff around you that are experts in this. But from a head coaching standpoint, you need to have a basic understanding if you're employing somebody to do it. So we brought this component in, and it was a, it was a big success. We had a 40-year-old against a 24-year-old in the yo-yo test, mate, uh, in, in the final laps. And uh, so we had a, we had a, it was a very, very uh, enjoyable and competitive environment, so it was good. This is a little quote, and I put this up just for two reasons. It's got West Brom and Celtic on there. It's, so it's, I think it's a fabulous quote, I really do, and it ties in with everything that we're, we're trying to get across in our community courses and also in our uh, provincial pre-Bs and big license courses. We have to have standards, and we're not going to sacrifice our standards, and we haven't sacrificed our standards this year in the pre-Bs or the Bs. But the key thing there is with in integrity. Everything we do is, has to have integrity and humility. I want it to be a positive environment experience. Even if you don't meet the standards, I want the coach to walk away and, and honestly at the end of it put their hands up and say, yeah, I learned something from this. I'm a better coach for this. And I was treated with a lot of humility. When I went through my evaluations, I was treated with respect. It was a two-way thing. It wasn't a one-way thing. We don't allow any of our instructors, evaluators to step into sessions. That's gone with the wind. If we're now going to help people, we'll call the coach over and we'll talk to them quietly, we'll whisper in their ear, we'll have a conversation while the session's going on. So there's flow to the sessions from the player's standpoint as well. So I think this is really, really important moving forward. Uh, the Ottawa B license was a, a big challenge for me personally in that the demand was so, 
so uh, great to run a second course that so we had 46 applicants. We did 40. And we did two schedules. So we ran two schedules within one course in Ottawa. Um, we also had a TD club head coach open session and meeting. And we had, uh, what was it, Glenn, about 12 of them show up. So they, they showed up, uh, attended the uh, session, and then we went back to the district office, myself, Bobby, Glenn, who else is with us? Jason. Uh, and we did a question and answer session on uh, the program and how we move forward. So the, the interest from the arts of club and coaches was, was fabulous. Um, we've brought some uh, different staff into that environment so they can get some staff training because we know the demand in 2013 is going to be greater than we've had before. So we need more staff that are uh, trained and ready to deliver the courses. And we brought in more of our evaluators for the post-course testing as well. So possible dates and locations for 2013. Kingston has been confirmed, so we're doing one in Kingston the last weekend of March, first weekend of April in their indoor facility there. It's a brand new full-size bubble, so we're going back to Kingston. So we'll see if we get any more uh, people attending their open, open night. We've looked at Windsor, we've looked at Waterloo, and we're going to look at Guelph, and we're looking at uh, with Centennial with you as well, mate, and we're also going to look at one in um, Durham, the Durham region. So we're looking at, we're looking at locations now, uh, and we'll have all that hopefully confirmed by the start of the new year. This is something that we're offering, and I'm going to extend this invitation to you as well. Now, some of you have had this uh, invitation, some of you haven't. We went to all the districts that had hosted a pre-B this year, and we asked the district presidents, all the TDs, to recommend people that they felt were supporting LTPD within the clubs, and had got coaches that had come through the pre-B program and felt would be uh, an asset for them to attend this workshop and get information on the standards, the material, and the evaluation process in a pre-B and B license. So every district responded back with a number of club head coaches or technical directors. So as of uh, December 3rd, 4th, we've got a two-day workshop. And right now, I think we've got 25 people confirmed where they're going to come in. Bobby, myself, Charles, uh, Rick's away, Martin, some of the other LFs, uh, MLFs. will be putting sessions on and showing them how we deliver the sessions, how we, how we, what we're looking for in the small-sided games. The importance of principles of play, we're going to spend a whole whack of time on that because for us, the big issue that we've got with coaches coming into this level, pre-B or B license, is not having an understanding of the principles of play. And you know as well as I do, if you don't understand that, I don't know how you can plan a session if you don't understand the principles. And if you don't understand the principles, how can you coach in a small-sided game or an 11 side game? So a lot of our focus um, in both of, the, both of the courses, but also in this workshop, is the principles and the importance of that. So if you're interested in attending this, uh, if you can email me and let me know, and I can put your name on the, on the workshop list for next Monday, or Monday and Tuesday. Okay. So that's something we're going to offer again. We'll offer that in several locations next year, just to try to educate club head coaches and technical directors on that. Any questions on pre-B or B license? Yes, Bob. Will it still be the same marking route that you went last year <coughs> when the individuals finish the course? The instructor will talk to them and tell them, yes, you pass, yes. Yes. We can't move away from that, mate. It's got to be done there and then. And I think the, the coaches uh, deserve that. Uh, the respect of having an answer there and then, not having to wait five, six, seven weeks. Uh, it's a stressful, as you know from, from working with your coaches, it's a stressful environment and we must make sure that we give the answers there and then. So we're not going to change that. Staying with that, Bob. It's difficult for us as evaluators to do that, but we've got to get over it and That's we're going to do it. It is, mate. It is. For the pre B, mate, uh, there's a cost. Uh, you, each district will, uh, will charge a different uh, fee depending on the facilities. For the B license, that's the only thing that we host. The B license this year, for 2013 will be $900, which includes the hotel, the post-course testing. And I'm working now on a, on a package with a, uh, a company in the UK where um, the attendees of the provincial B will get a 12-month license to a, um, a software product where they can plan sessions, a session planning pro program as well with a library of information. So. 
Yes, mate. That's the, the workshop <clears throat> on the third and the fourth. There's no cost for that. No cost, mate, no. You just got to play. If you come, you got to play. <laughs> Sweats. That's what it's going to cost you. What are the hours? Nine to five. Nine to five. It's Monday, Tuesday. Nine to five. So and you can't really have to participate? You, you, you definitely. <laughs> Bring her along, mate. She can play as well. Okay, any questions on pre b b license? Is that hopefully educated you, told, give you information on the changes? Yes, no. Did you know that? Did you not know that? Anybody alive? Check out pulses right now. Yes? I was going to suggest, you maybe you want to mention, Mark, that the, the low host questions, but re-evaluation. Yep, thank you, Bobby, yeah. There's no re-evaluations on these courses. Uh, a a pre-B, in, in the way we've set it up, a pre-B is set up for you to, to, to meet the standards. If you're, at that, if you're ready for that standard. If you're not ready for that standard, then you, unfortunately you're not going to meet it because we can educate you, as, as, and we can educate you for three weeks, but if you're not seeing the components of the game, the smallest of the game, then you're not ready to move on. It's probably because you don't have an understanding of the principles of the play. So we're offering the information and we'll do everything we possibly can to get you to a, po a point where um, you need to be, but you've got to have the answers. So there's no re-evaluation on a pre-B. Some of the feedback we've had is this, uh, our, a, couple of, a couple of good ones, um, because we changed the format in that one member of staff delivers the first three days, and on the last day, another member of staff comes in to help out with the evaluations. So some of the feedback we've had is, I wasn't able to form a relationship with that member of staff because you just come in today. Or there's inconsistencies between the staff. The usual stuff that we're gonna get no matter where. And, and, and I hate to say it, but it's an excuse. Because if you can coach and you understand the principles, you know your key factors, you can organize it. It doesn't matter whether I'm assessing you, or Bob's assessing you, or Stan's assessing you. So I, I don't hold that feedback with any, any uh, consistency or any regards right now. Uh, that's the feedback we've had right now. So there's no re-evaluations at pre-B. There's no re-evaluations at B license because I feel by taking the, the testing and adding it to a two month period after the course and giving you a month in between each of your sessions, that's giving you ample time to prepare for those sessions and have the support of your club head coach, technical director, and also have the opportunity to be able to practice these sessions for a whole month before we come in. There's no need to be re reassessed. If you're not ready, you're not ready at that point. So they have to retake it? They have to retake the whole course. Uh, a waiting, pe <laughs> waiting period should be, should be uh, a season, so we had, a, we had a, an individual um, that took it, the very first one up in Sudbury with Ray and I, and he came and took the very, very end one in Waterloo. And the difference in the gentleman from when we saw him was night and day. So he spent the whole summer preparing and he came in and he was successful. He was one of our top candidates at the end. So I'm saying a season. So if you do it in the spring, you can take it in the fall. Uh, but if you take it in the fall, you're not taking another one in the fall. You're not taking it back to back weekends like we, we had a one individual. Okay, so there's got to be a, a period of time where you take your information away and you absorb it and you practice it and you, and, and you, and you uh, prepare. There's no re evaluations on the B license, there's no re evaluations on the national B license. That's, that's from Ray Clark, and if you were at the workshop in, in uh, February, you said that. There are re-evaluations at the A license. Okay? So is everybody okay with that? And there's no, ex there's no ex exemption to that. We don't make any, because if I do it for one, I have to do it for all, and we're not doing it. Because then I get into a, a deep hole, and I can't get myself out of it, so we're saying no re-evaluations for everybody. Yep. So are you okay with that? No choice. Yep, no choice. So prepare before you come into the course, prepare between your, your sessions and you'll meet the standard. Anything else? Yes, no? Okay, great. 
All right, so now we're going to talk about you guys for a little while. The, 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 uh, the process for this, because again, I want to make sure that you're clear on this. So when, when you're out there in the trenches and people ask you how you became an LF, this is the process. Now, this is how the process will be for 2013. I'm going to go through this quickly. So you all know you sent your applications in with your letter of recommendation and your resume. We had a closing date. Uh, of August the 7th and we had a review committee. We had four people that sat around and reviewed all the applicants that came in. We looked at our needs from a geographical standpoint and we looked at feedback from MLFs and we also uh, looked at any feedback that we'd had from the paying customer towards certain LFs, good or bad. We made our selection and on our selection, there may have been one or two individuals that we felt needed a little bit more work before they could go out if they were returning LF, uh, more work before they could uh, actually facilitate on their own. So we gave those individuals the option to come back as a learning facilitator, but on the understanding that they would have to go through a little bit of a mentorship with one of our MLFs. Those individuals decided they didn't want to do that, so they're no longer LFs. Okay. And then we looked at where we need to expand our LF base geographically, and that's why we've got quite a few new people in the room today that are helping us to uh, increase our numbers in the areas where we need them. Appointments were made in September. Our workshop is here this weekend, and we've got one in Ottawa in January. So I'll be going up to Ottawa with some of the staff to, to deliver what we've delivered here this weekend for them up there. And for the individuals from the GTA that couldn't make this weekend, they'll be going there as well. It's mandatory that you attend one of these two workshops. And I think we made that pretty clear last year and, and pretty clear this year. Uh, here's our selection criteria. Coaching qualifications, soccer and or NCCP. Teaching certificate and experience, facilitation qualifications, previous LF experience, geographical needs and LTPD knowledge. CSA say that we have to, we can only hire people that are a provincial B or higher. We've gone against the grain because we feel there's people with skills uh, from a facilitation standpoint or from a teaching standpoint that can, can deliver quality active start courses that don't have provincial Bs. And there's people in the room today that, at that level. Why would we not hire a, an individual that works in a, in a kindergarten environment that knows how to deal with those age groups and deliver courses for those age groups? That's what, that's what we're doing. Okay. That was our criteria. Uh, these are our appointments. We've got 11, 11, 11 master learning facilitators, and you were able to meet them over the course of the weekend. The only people you haven't met is, wait for this, Steve, Stephen Hart. <laughs> Uh, Roy Hillier, who I think you all probably know, uh, Tony Harrison, and myself. There's the other four for, uh, MLFs that we have. We've got nine evaluators who are part of our pre-B and B license evaluation staff. And we've got, including these nine, we've got 62 learning facilitators across the province. Just a little bit of a, a reminder for the, the returning LFs, but this really is directed towards our brand new LFs who are in the room today. So I hope you can see this. This is our process of becoming a learning facilitator. So your application pro, uh, we talked about, identification we talked about. This is part of your first stage of your training this weekend. The second part of your training is to go and observe a course. So if you're brand new this weekend, you'll make contact with Kathleen and say so there's a course in my area, an active start course for fundamentals, I'd like to go and observe it. You go and observe the course, we let the facilitator know that you're coming in. Uh, you observe the course, you have a little bit of a debrief for the facilitator after the course, and then you'll go back and on the next course that's available in your area, you'll co-facilitate with the facilitator or an MLF. So you'll work together. Which way? Practice yeah, probably should be, yeah. Yeah. So you'll do, you, as Martin said, you'll do that pilot practice delivery co facilitation with the MLF or with the LF. We don't want to throw you in there. It goes back to what we talked about yesterday. Here's your bags of balls, go. We're not doing that. We're giving you the opportunity to observe and then co facilitate, get some information back from uh, an LF or an MLF before we send you out on your own. Okay? Once you've done that, 
um, and, and your MLF or your LF is, feels comfortable that you're ready to go, then you'll start to do delivering courses on your own, but there'll be continual support and development from your MLF. That's why I felt it was important that this weekend you got to meet your MLF and start to form a, a relationship with them. Okay. N new LFs, is that, does that make sense? Any questions from new LFs on that? We've got LFs in the room that weren't able to do this last year because of the amount of cancellations we had on active start. So if you didn't complete your training last year, we'd like you to do it again this year. If you did complete it and you'd like to go back through it because you're a little rusty, then we can make that arrangement as well. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? Yes, no? I have a question. Mike. Yes, mate. Why, why is my group the most attractive? <laughs> mate, you know what they say? Quality. Is there a different criteria for <laughs> <laughs> you're upset, you're But Bobby's in your group, mate. Any 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 uh, comment, Bobby? What else did you do? Let's take it in the Bible we saw. Any questions on that? Any concerns? Is everybody comfortable with that? Is everybody okay with that? You, will you be able to pass that message on to somebody that come to you and said, I'd like to be a facilitator next year. Do you understand the process? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Did Brilliant. Just for the new LFs, uh, Mark, active starts will be uh, delivered within the months of April, the earliest May. Yes. More likely. Yes. So there is a big period of time from now to then. Yes. Active start and fundamentals. Yep. It's a great point. So if the new LFs would like to observe other courses, then you, you won't be delivering those courses, but you're more than welcome to attend those courses and we can make the arrangements with the LF, which will be part of your personal development, ongoing development moving forward. Great point, Charles. Thank you. Okay. We may have one or two early active starts, but I doubt it. But So that, there's the option. Handsome Raymond. Mark, you mentioned... Uh... <laughs> you mentioned something about the uh, uh, the payment in the um, in house service program. Yes, we're going to come back to that in a little while, mate. But th yes. Yes. Yeah, it, it's, it's the stages we've got to go through and part of, part of our process here is to make sure that you're comfortable with each stage before you get moved along. So we're looking at, we've got a bunch of people that came to us last year. They've delivered some, um, learning, uh, some active starts and fundamentals. So on their feedback from the MLFs, if the MLFs feel they're ready to move on, then we'll start to move them into the, the uh, Learn to Train Soccer for Life courses. If they're not quite ready yet, still need a little bit more time spent, we'll, we'll work with them in that environment. So it may take you a couple of years to get to the Learn to Train um, uh, Soccer for Life. And then once you get into that point, then we're looking for people to become evaluators. So once you become comfortable in that environment, we're looking to move you into the evaluation uh, area. Once you become comfortable in that, and then we start to increase our MLF base. There's a nice little progression as you go through, but you need to put your time in and get comfortable with the material and the facilitation skills before we move you along. So this part yeah. is, of course, obviously stating the obvious, but just in case of um, sending information on to others, it's a continual yearly process when we're coming back. Continual yearly process. You're not guaranteed uh, to come back. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the things you have to do to be able to reapply next year. Okay. Yes, mate. I'd just like to add something. For, for the new folks coming through this, I went through it last year, and uh, it, it's, it's a great process. You, there's lots of support. Um, I was fortunate enough, like I, I worked with Bobby, Martin, and Bob uh, throughout this whole learning process, and it, it really was an education for me. And, and one of the benefits I found was, first of all, you weren't thrown in there alone. So you always did have someone with you, especially for the first uh, number of sessions. But uh, if I can make a suggestion to people, it is to try and um, work with different facilitators. Because you know the, the three in particular that I've given, you know, each one brings something different to the table. They have different ways of approaching it, different mannerisms and all the rest of it. And, and you learn from that. And you pick your own, you know, the way you like to do it and whatever. Good. 
yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great way, and you've got great support behind it. Good, so thanks, man. Yep. Yes, Charles. The bigger the percentage of returning KLFs every year, the higher the quality of our delivery Correct. will become. Correct. I, I will propose them in its practice right now. Let's find out what their needs are. We're, we're coming to that. It's my next presentation. We're on the same. We're on the. That, we yep. We're on the. We're on the same wavelength, mate. We're going to get there. Yep. Do it, Mike. Yep. Yeah. It's <laughs> do you support West Brom? <laughs> you should do. You should do. You should do. Okay. So everybody's good with that. Next program. Female mentorship program. Uh, this was something I was asked to put together uh, this spring. So I racked my brain on how I could come up with a program that I felt was going to be consistent with what we're doing from a community stream, excellent stream um, standpoint but also taking into consideration my experiences with females that I work with in the provincial program and in the club system and also getting feedback from females on how we could come up with a program that would hopefully work for them. So this is what we came, this is what we came up with and, and, and my first people that I, uh, so I ran my draft through was, was Kathleen and a couple of other females in the office saying, would this appeal to you? So it's a nine month program and we wanted to hire a female mentor coach that would oversee the program and had the qualifications and the experience to be able to relay that information to the mentee coaches coming in. So her responsibility would be to manage the four mentor coaches in the coaching <coughs> department's programs but also in the player development programs. So there's consistency, there's one person they always work with and go to no matter what environment they're in. So with that, that was the, the, uh, the key position there. The benefits for the, for the mentee coaches is that we would offer them training in our coaching department program. So actually start fundamentals, learn to train soccer for life. They would come into the workshops, they'd be able to go to the courses, see the material. They're not going to be learning facilitators, but they're going to get the training. So if they decide to at the end of the program, I'd like to go this way or that way, if they'd like to come this way and become learning facilitators, then they've completed as part of the training. If they want to go the other route and go to the provincial program, great, they're still in our system, but they've always got that little bit of training and knowledge of what we do in the coaching area. Uh, we want them to observe provincial training and get pre and post debriefs from the head coach of the team. So having an understanding on why they put that session on, what was the, the methodology behind it, what they were trying to achieve, and at the end of it, did you actually achieve that, why didn't you achieve it, or did you achieve it? Observe provincial games, and again, get that pre and post game debrief. Uh, have experience in planning sessions. So after the first two or three months, they're gonna, they're gonna do lots of observation. Then they're gonna start to put sessions together and put those sessions on with the provincial team and get feedback from that. Uh, there's an option, uh, again this, this is not a free option, if they can get sponsorship there's not, uh, the option to, to go on international travel with the, with the uh, provincial program. Attendance at All-Star uh, training camps and tournaments, this is the last one in 2013, All-Stars are, are have been stopped, CSA are putting an end to it. So it's an opportunity to go to the last all national All-Stars and get them into that environment where we've got that, that totally competitive environment and how we, we prepare teams and players uh, ready for that. So that's some of the benefits. The desired outcomes for us is that the female coaches are training both pathways, as I just mentioned. The experience of working within the OSA environment, remember I said to you yesterday, we want to get more females involved and I want them to experience the environment that we're trying to create so they feel comfortable and they want to stay with us. It's part of the culture I'm talking about at the bottom. And the retirement of female coaching staff, which we've had difficulty doing in this area for the last 10 years. So that was the desired outcomes from, from our standpoint, from an organizational standpoint. So uh, we received 33 applications. Can you believe that? I, it blew me away. There's that many females with the qualifications that wanted to come in and be educated and be part of it. So it was fabulous. Until we, looked at the, until we looked at the applications, and every one was a quality application. It was so difficult to go, uh, yeah, well, we'll take that one, or we'll keep that one, or throw that one out. It was, it was 33, oh, sorry, 32, because one was a male. Uh, applications that came in, so it was tough, so it was tough. 
So we went, <laughs> went down to a shortlist and the appointments were made. Connie, Connie Mercer's the head mentor coach and these are our four uh, mentee female coaches who are in the room today. I'm gonna ask the five of you to stand up if you wouldn't mind, please. Good, thank you. So welcome aboard for, for the, uh, just to, again to make sure we're totally transparent here, for these four here, it's a volunteer position. The, they put in as much time as they want. So if they want to come in here four times a week, they come in four times. If they want to come in four times a month or twice a week, it's entirely up to them. But they coordinate that through Connie. Connie works with myself and Kevin Small in the, the player development program. And Connie's making, uh, she's on an honorarium. So it's not a, not a paid position, it's an honorarium position that probably just might cover our travel costs. So we don't have a lot of funding on this, but that's a start. We're hoping to get funding and build on this moving forward. I hope next year to have eight people in this program, two mentor coaches. Hope the year after to have more. We hope to trickle this down into the districts and make this a, a program that we can all be proud of and be part of. So that's our, our female mentorship program. Uh, we're also because we, we, the quality of the people that came in, I felt so bad that we, we couldn't offer them something. So uh, I've spoken to uh, Lisa Beatty here and she's in full support of me putting some workshops on for the individuals that weren't part of the program. And we met with Linda on Friday night and Linda and Connie are gonna put together workshops throughout the year. So we've got four dates right now. We've got Sunday the, the 13th where we're gonna do a, they're gonna do, it's gonna be totally female. Uh, MLF and head mentor coach running it. Um, nine to five, part of that will be in the classroom, part of it will be in the um, bubble, and they're gonna focus on <laughs> principles of play, throughout the day, principles of play. And then uh, Saturday, March 23rd, we're doing a full day where they're gonna come in and they're gonna do a, a little two or three hour workshop in the morning, and hopefully John Herman's gonna come in and speak to the, to the coaches. Then we're gonna invite them into the, the uh, technical director's meeting, and then into the coaching conference on Sunday. Um, and then we're gonna do two more workshops in June and September. So that's what we got scheduled for, for, the, for the female mentor program, okay? Again, it, it is to be able to educate uh, our coaches in, in a comfortable, uh, learning environment and to prepare them for success at the provincial and national B licenses. That's that's the, that's the outcome here, desired outcome. Yes, mate. I think it's the 24th March. I see some people writing days. March 24th. No, that's the Saturday, the 24th Sunday. This is the second. Oh, 24th. Somebody missed the. Uh, I have to talk to my editor. <laughs> to take, 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 so it's the 24th. Oh, and while I'm there, I'll. The 24th, as Alex uh, mentioned yesterday, we've got a world-class lineup on our coaching conference this year. I don't think, uh, we didn't anticipate this. So we've got John Herdman, um, we all know John, um, and, and what he's achieved in 12 months. I was lucky enough to see one of his presentations uh, a few weeks back, and uh, absolute quality. I think you're gonna be blown away by his methodology and approach to coaching our sports, and the way he's brought all the players and they brought into the program. So we've got on-field sessions, from him, we've got Sam Snow from the US, who's the director of, of uh, coaching for uh, US youth soccer. Again, a quality clinician that is LTPD through and through. And we've got uh, Nick Levitt from the English FA, who's just revolutionized the way they're delivering their LTPD program in, in England, which if you think about it for the English FA to make the dramatic changes that have made is a, is a major turning the ship for them. So Nick's coming over as well. Uh, we were working on getting Bill Beswick, if you all know Bill Beswick, but unfortunately he's in Australia working, but he's, he's already promised he'll come the following year. So <coughs> we're already starting to work on that. So we've got a good lineup there for this year, okay? Uh, here's that CSA update that I promised you. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the excellent stream. This is just to give you the heads up. I can't tell you exactly when this is gonna happen. Um, I've been to several meetings, Bobby and also Martin have been to meetings in the last month or so, and they're, they're working on this actively with NCCP. So when this is actually rolled out, we're gonna have the format that we're already familiar with over here, but we're gonna have a competition introduction area here, which right now is called the Pre-B. We don't know what they're gonna call it. 
and it'll be an educational course that you'll take, again, we don't know how long it is, probably much the same as a pre B, where it'll be educational. At the end of that course, you decide whether you want to be evaluated or not. So if you want to be evaluated, then you'll go through a post-course evaluation, pretty much like we're doing there. Uh, on completing that evaluation, then you'll be, and if you pass that, you'll be trained. You'll be classified as trained, and then you can make a decision on which way you're going to go in the excellent stream. If you decide not to be evaluated, then your status will be in training, and you'll stay there until you decide on, uh, when you want to be evaluated. Once you've come through that, you've got two options now. We've got option number one, which is standard to what we are doing now. We've got B license, provincial B license, national B license, A license. We've got a high performance license that's been put together. That's pretty much standard what we're doing there. Or we can go on to this side, which is the children's license, which is a course that entails pretty much the same amount of hours as a provincial B and a national B. So it's the, the, the time is condensed and put into that license. And that is geared towards the 6 to 12 year old. So it'd be people who are specializing in those age groups for those players. On completion of that, it'll be the same as a national B license. Okay, so we'll have the same as a national B license. And then coming out of that, you can move into the A license. So that's, that's where we are. Have I missed anything out on that, Bobby? Martin, did I miss anything on that? No. So that's, that's the change. Now, will it be 2013? We hope. But I doubt it will be probably more like 2014. The only thing I would say, Martin, is the evaluation <coughs> process yep. developing for, for that is very similar to, to what we've, yeah. we've done. So yep. Again, the Ontario model, playing with it a little bit, yep. but you find it very similar to the evaluation. So you'll find a national B now, your evaluations will be in your own environment, and there'll be provincial national evaluators that will come in, and same on the A license. The only, Mark, the only thing we might move on to is with portfolios. You might end up, you have to have evidence. Right. So it's not just your TD writing a letter and saying that you have done the work. Correct. You then have to have like we do in the B yep. license and the A license. The A license. A license. You have to have your workbook. Yep. And you have to have evidence that you have completed the task. Yep, definitely. That's that's it. And again, once we get the information, we'll we'll clarify that. Gary, I'll come right back to you, mate. One thing I want to add to this is that all of these components will have a uh, period of time where they're valid for. So right now, if you have an A license, it's valid for five years and there's no, you just reapply, you get it. From NC, NCC bringing this out across all sports now, that you have to complete a upgrading <coughs> educational component ongoing, or you have to go in for back, back in for reevaluation. And then and NCCP are really coming down hard on, on CSA for this, and CSA are going to come down and hard on us as well. So uh, licenses will expire, and it may even come into this area here as well at some point, which I think is good because it's ongoing education and uh, equivalency will be a big thing as well. Now, if you if you if you got coaches in your system or coming to these courses that want equivalency. They don't come to us. They go to CSA, and CSA will determine what the equivalency is. I can't give equivalency. It's, there's only one person that can do that. It's Ray Clark. Okay. Now, they may say you've got a UA for a license, but we want to test you. So you may have to come in for a uh, retesting on your UA for a UA for b or whatever. That's something that Ray's working on as well right now. Okay. Gary, CSA, mate. CSA never gives give anybody equivalency for a. No, that's right. I saw that this week. Yeah, I saw that this week. Yeah, Gary, mate, I missed your point there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, mate. But again, it's 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 only for a very very small percentage of coaches coming through this, and Tony Fonseca is working on that currently right now. And you'll have to be involved. I think at the the uh, you can't you you can't be a club coach. I think you're going to be have to be involved in a national program or a provincial program at some point to even get into that. Yeah. Yes, mate. What's that written vertically between uh, this is where you train fundamentals back to start? This here? Uh, competition introduction. 
Mike, you want to explain that for me, mate? The compet yeah, competition development replaces the old, what used to be the old level three theory of coaching. So there's, there's six modules for that. Um, they're all offered individually. They're typically not grouped together. Um, you can go to the uh, Coaches Association of Ontario website and there's a calendar every month that, well, it's on a yearly basis when the, these courses are offered. It's just like in the CAO conference on the uh, uh, twenty third or the end of February. Yep. Um, there's a, a fun. I think most of them are being offered at that time. And yep. But you, they're all regionally delivered. Yep. Thanks, mate. And Mike's actually going through that program himself now. You you. I'm a learning facilitator for three of the yeah, right. modules. I'm I still going through the assessment and the mentoring part for that. I just got the training. October, but I'm in the NCI program, right. which probably the HP license yes. candidates will probably have to go through. NCI. Yes, yeah, yeah. So good. So does that does that help you, mate? Answer your question. And 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 you know, I don't want to dump this on you, Mike, but Mike can give you a lot more information on that than I can because he's heavily involved in that. Martin's got a good knowledge on that as well. It's an important component. Really is really important component. One of the things that would help them. Uh, MED yes. is one of them. <coughs> Nutrition. Plan of practice. Yep. Which is identical to what we do. Design a sports program. Mental mental training. Yep. And teaching and learning. Yep. So there's the six components. Excellent. Which okay. You, which you would have to do for provincial team. Uh, yep. Here. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, excellent.